Welcome back to Afternoon Express. It's almost time for us to get cracking on our next delicious dish in the show. Obviously with Clem Pedro is going to be making us something super yummy. But you know what? I always thought that when you think of fishing villages, you always wonder whether fishing villages are going to be small little towns with a whole bunch of opas and tannies mm -hmm. that are really cool like community vibes. I went to Soldana recently to go and visit the Sea Harvest factory that side. And can I tell you how big this community is and the way that the entrepreneur in me was just frothing at the amount of work that they've created for this incredible community. You also got a chance I to did. go. But and you, yeah, what did you do? I got to cook. What were you oh, doing? I just got to interview everyone and have a really good time. I got to meet all the cool people. And I think I made friends with absolutely every single one in Saldana. Like absolutely it. amazing place. How cool is the town? It's really, really amazing. Clem's a really cool experience that he had at Saldana will be airing next week on Afternoon Express. But he has a quick insight into how our community became a whole entire village of people all surrounded around fish. Take a look. Parents, when I think of a fishing village, I always think of a very small, quaint town by the sea with an uncle on a boat with a fishing rod. But this operation is on some other level. So as the director of operations, uh, tell me how big this production actually is. Yeah, you know, with an uncle at sea and a fishing rod, we won't keep 2,500 people going every day. Sheesh. So that's really what happens, you know. I mean, it's, uh, it's quite overwhelming, you know. We've got uh, 1,500 people on the land-based operation and about 900 people uh, going to sea every day. That's essentially what we do. We, sure. we catch fish, we process in two factories, and we sell to 20 countries across the world. Wow. And obviously, we also look after our local market, of which we are the, the leading brand in South Africa. Sure. Tell me about the community here of Soldana, because it seems like fishing really just runs through their veins. That is very true. I mean, go to anybody in the community, they had some time in their lives, they would have had an association with Sea Harvest, whether it be through being sponsored, whether it's been through a bursary. We have currently we have 23 bursaries, which we sponsor throughout their studying career. We are currently also embarking on a program to build a early childhood development school, which have 90 learners, which is really awesome for us. We've got a lot of vision to associate Sea Harvest with the community. I mean, one of our HR managers always say, Sea Harvest is Saldana, and Saldana is Sea Harvest. To see a production on that kind of scale all run so smoothly is incredible to watch. Tell me more about your family though, Brenda. We are five sisters. I'm the second youngest and I um, grow up on the Dorings on a farm. My father passed away years ago. I finished my trick and I moved to Saldana. I fall in love with Sea Harvest. It was something new for me. I started as a fish worker and I became a line leader. A couple of years later, I became a production leader and Seven years ago, I became an assistant unit manager with only metric certificate. The open ocean. It reminds me of that quote from Jean Cousteau who once said, the sea, once it's cast its spell, holds you in its nets of wonder forever. Beautiful. Hey, Danilo, what are you up oh, to? Hi, Kent, and I'm just dreaming, I guess. I'm dreaming of the open ocean. Isn't that your dream too? Of course. There's a bit of maritime history in my family. I think that got the salt into my veins. I started my career about 14 years ago at Sea Harvest. Uh, I've been a captain for seven years, and now I'm part of the management team at Sea Harvest on the shore side. So clearly you've got a lot of experience in this space. What is life like out there in the open ocean? It takes a very special type of character to adjust to life at sea. It's long days, it's long hours. At the end of the day, though, it's a very rewarding job. An average fishing trip on this type of vessel would be about 45 days. Everything on a fishing vessel or on a trawler depends on, 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 on the fishing. That determines what your day is going to be like. One day you could be relaxing, but once the fishing picks up, you could look at long hours in the factory, long processing hours, and then looking forward to some off time. If there's one thing that I've learned about the open ocean is that it is so vast, and I'm very interested to know how you guys find fish at any given point. Well, the whole process of finding fish these days has evolved so much, and there's such a heavy influence of electronic equipment and sensors involved in the industry these days that I would have to explain that the whole process to you in the bridge. Yeah, whoa. This honestly reminds me of that movie, The Perfect Storm. Can I sit in the captain's chair? You may. Once in a lifetime opportunity. Tell me more about what all these buttons do. Essentially, this is the nerve center of the, of, of the vessel. Okay, this is where all your fish finding takes place, as well as your navigation. You have your echo sounder, as well as your net monitors. How exactly does the echo sounder work? The echo sounder helps us to find fish because it sends out pulses. That essentially gives you the depth of your water at any given time. 
but also your fish gives you a certain distinct type of echo. And that it also kept me to predetermine what type of fish is actually looking at on the sea bottom. This vessel was built in 1987 in Norway, but we have constantly upgraded it with cutting edge technology. In terms of our electronic charge systems we have on board, it's all interlinked with our GPS systems, AIS, which is the automatic identification system for us to see other vessels. Well, seeing as I'm sitting in the captain's chair, let's say my echo sounder tells me that we found a batch of fish I want to catch. What happens next? Well, you'll get the indication from your sensors as to the amount of fish we have in, in your nets. Then we will sound the alarm and get our crew out on deck. This clearly is the heart of the ship. What happens when you guys have found a catch? At Sea Office, we're actually doing demersal or bottom trawling. So on 2,000 meters of cable, a troll net is brought up off the bottom and then onto the vessel. And then it gets processed through our factory so that on this type of vessel, no further processing is required ashore. She has a, a capacity to carry approximately 420 tons of fish in her fish hold. Sea Harvest pride themselves on their sustainable fishing model. How do you guys go about achieving something like that? Well, we at Sea Harvest are obviously trying to do everything within our power to attain the best possible certification for, for our product and the company as a whole, which in, the, in our case would be the MSC certification, which means that our fish is sustainable firstly, and also that it's wild caught, which means we actually want the fish to be there for generations to come. For example, these days we're working with troll ring fencing, which means that we're not allowed to explore beyond certain boundaries out at sea, and also then guidelines in our fishing permits, which means that captains, for example, if they do find smaller mixes of fish, they would probably move away to a, a different area. This was such a fun experience being here with the Sea Harvest family. Really, really such a vocation for people to get involved. Thank you for teaching me so much. Pleasure. As cheesy as I am on a boat, really, really cool experience. The, the family and the community from Saldana were incredible. I honestly cannot wait to go back to see them all again because uh, they were so friendly. And I know you've had a very, very similar experience. Mm -hmm, so, absolutely. Because people love fish so much. And so we're going to be trying to make people in South Africa always love fish as much as they do. And so what are we making today? So I'm making a quiche. Everybody loves quiche. Mm -hmm. Do you love quiche? I do like quiche because it's like simple, bite-sized, and it's packed full of like a whole bunch of proteins and nutrients. And Nutrient I'm packing it full side. of some... <laughs> Packing full of some amazing seafood goodness using haddock. Cool. Haddock's got that signature smoky flavor that we all love so much. So I'm going to get started straight away. So I've got my onions and my peppers in a pan that are just soft and slightly. I don't want to char them. Mm -hmm. Keep it nice and just, just soft. But you don't want to bring out too much of the charry flavor. Yes, and you want them to have a slight little bit of a crunch to them too, obviously. Exactly. So let me textures, just get textures, my, textures. my haddock fillets in there. Mm. And it's um, obviously the biggest thing when it comes to seafood is sustainability. Yeah. And that's what you always know you're going to get when you mm. actually go with Sea Harvest. It's a thing I honestly learned so much about this experience working with that team because they were really adamant about the fact that the, the way that they garden trawl for these fish and everything that's caught, that in those nets, if there's ever like anything caught in those nets, they will use it for a specific reason and they'll make sure that it's sustainably sourced. That which they're, they're not allowed to catch, they will make sure it ends up back where it needs to be. They really, really do focus a lot on that. And I, I was impressed because I would have imagined a company that big that you must you have a lot of wastage, etc. They do not. Everything mm -hmm. gets used. Absolutely. So, Dan, can you pass me the eggs? I'm gonna make my. The oh, eggs. the eggs. I'm like, you pointed at this. I'm like, okay, this is not the eggs. This one, eggs. Winkle, they're the eggs. Okay. Eggs are the. the, the, the <laughs> well, those are things that come out of a. Ch uh, well, let's not describe where they come from. <laughs> okay. Children, ask your parents about that. Don't ask me or Afternoon Express about where <laughs> eggs come from, okay? <laughs> All right, so we're making the royale, <laughs> which is the, the base of our quiche. Okay. So I've got the eggs, I'm gonna start whisking these. And can you pass with the cream? Sure. You can actually add it for me. There you go. Is this not one of those times I must do it slowly or fast? Because you shot at me once before. I did, and we had a serious talk after the show. Oh yeah. <laughs> Clem was like, if there's anything you do when it comes to making, what were we making that day? Do you even remember? Oh, what? oh, we made hollandaise. We're making a hollandaise sauce. If there's anything you need to know about hollandaise sauce, slowly incorporate the butter. Slowly. <laughs> I just like threw the whole thing in. You were right. so upset. I've never seen Clem upset for that day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then the, uh, I'm not even going to acknowledge that. Okay. And then the sour cream, if you can just scoop that out for me. Sure. There you go. This guy. So the sour mm. cream is quite a different um, addition to the quiche, but it works so well with these flavors that we're using today. Okay, cool. Cool, so that's our royale that he's done. Oh, I added some um, celery salt and some seasoning with this guy over here. That okay, went in cool. there already. That was thrown in there. We're busy talking. Mm -hmm. And then the, can you, now you can pass our base. Ah, and this is the special surprise. And what we're talking about surprises also, don't forget to hit our Facebook page. There's some really cool competitions that you can win, like instant prizes. If you go find the Sea Harvest uh, post on our Facebook page, all the details on how you can win are there for you. So go mm -hmm. ahead there right now. 
Cool. So what I've got over here is some um, filo pastry, mm -hmm. and all I've done is oh, um, folded it, looking so cool. I know. And you spoke about keeping it rustic. Yeah. I love crumpling up the edges like that because they cook it, they go super crispy That's in the oven. So rad. Cool. So this is smelling good, looking good. I'm gonna start layering this in, but Dad, you can add a little bit of that spinach for me. Sure. Into the into here. There we go. Into the base. Okay. And not we've spoken about this obviously. before. And spinach wilt, wilt, so don't be shy. Yeah, don't be shy. Okay. And I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, not gonna do layer, layer, layer. I'm gonna kind of combine the the fish mixture with our spinach. Well, it looks amazing like this. And by the way, just to for those who are looking to make this sort of thing at home, how many layers of filo have you used here? I like doing about, I'd say go four. Okay, Because so you're four gonna layers. slice it and you wanna remove it. So four. Yeah. Remember, it sounds like a lot, but it's really, really thin. Each layer is super thin. And the idea is obviously you're putting down those layers, and every layer you sort of you put them all four down, and then you crumple that tips in the mm -hmm. little edges, you make them fold them in quite nicely because they're square and to get it to fit into a round dish you're going to have to like fold them in make it look as rustic as that is. is. So that's basically how he's done it. He didn't share that information with you but I'm kind enough to share <laughs> that information with you. Thank you Dan. Okay. Can you pass the cheese to me? Sure. Now there's a rule that's like a lot of people probably like swearing back home now you don't mix cheese and seafood. Mm -hmm. okay? I mean, like, no, it's fine. Exactly. Totally. It's like all those who said, Dan, you can't mix cheese with like live television and I say no. Well the poll came back. Oh. And it's kind of a... <laughs> it's like no to cheese. Cheese must <laughs> fall. Is that what it is? It's really... <laughs> so I'm using some Gruyere cheese nice and sharp again, playing okay. really well with the smoky flavours on the haddock. Cool. And then we pour our Royale over without missing. We Not a drop. Impossible okay. with you, Clem. I know. Let's see Let's if you manage this. You're doing quite well, actually. I'm, I'm quite surprised. I think you <gasps> might have... No, no, you're managing, you're managing. And obviously that's going to be the, the ingredient that keeps all of these different flavours together. That's the part that's going to set, it's what's going to give it its flavour, it's that sort of egginess, that, that what you call a spongy flavour on the inside. That's what that is over there. It's, it's what brings all the ingredients together. Okay. It's like you and me, we just, we're just individuals, but when the egg comes in, we just become one. People around us, they're just like so drawn in and like kept together. We're those people in the face. Exactly. So and then what happens next? It goes into the oven. Um, you can do it at 200 degrees. Mm -hmm. Look out for the tips. If they start browning too much, a piece of foil over them, and that'll okay. stop that happening. But there's a, there's, a, there's a saying when it comes to the quiche. You want it to still be a little, you want it to have a sexy quiver in the center. A what? A sexy quiver. How does that work? Oh, well, when you like you little... shake it and it just, Show me, how does it go? Like a little... <laughs> exactly. And as it sits, it firms up. And it's like so a white boy dance move, but it's like... <laughs> you know, just That's all they do, just like this. I thought we were oh, we leaving the cheese. <laughs> <laughs> how did you get this thing to stay so round like this? Is it like one of these yeah. trays that has the bottom that just moves? Uh... It's actually made in a... So let me just see that quickly. Okay, it's made cool. in a, the tart... Okay, so tart little shots. You just exactly. take the base off. Amazing! So do you guys want to make this delicious, delicious quiche for your family at home? What you can do is go to our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. There you can find all the details and make this for dinner tonight. So much fishy fun in the loft today. But remember, we love hearing for you and I'm ab ab from you, and I'm absolutely loving all the interaction online today. So uh, do comment on our Facebook page, which is Afternoon Express, or tweet us at Afternoon Chat using the official hashtag Afternoon Express. I'm loving going through all of the comments. And remember, we are going to try and get back to you on all of the comments and messages as well as we go along the day. We'll see you after the break.